American Idol may be on its last season, but there are still plenty of talented students right here at Ole Miss. Some Ole Miss students are showing their talents. Who's going to be crowned the Ole Miss Idol? That's coming up on Newswatch. Good evening, I'm Rain Craven. And I'm Ariel Onstott. If you happen to be walking past Fulton Chapel this morning, you couldn't have missed the huge crowd gathering outside. A church group stopped by with a message that angered many of the passing students. Peyton Green was there and has the latest on what all the commotion was about. There is no such thing as a homosexual Christian. Never has been one, never will be one. It was a chilly day this afternoon, but that didn't stop one church group from preaching their message outside of Fulton Chapel. That message, repent your sins or face eternal punishment. Uh, well, what our message is, is Jesus said, except you repent, you all shall likewise perish. And Jesus also said that he would that repentance and remission of sins would be preached among all men. So we're here to preach a, a gospel of repentance by the King James Bible to tell the world that they must repent or they're going to go to hell, that sin will send you to hell. Sin separates you from God. Sin will send you to hell. The group is originally from Texas, but say they travel all across the country often on college campuses. Uh, but there's something about a college campus just because you get to interact with the students, uh, you get to talk about the Word of God with them, and you get to you know, share with them the gospel, and that's what we're out here doing. Go get in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. While today's protests were peaceful, students on their way to class were not shy about stopping by and firing back at the group. Many students felt that the message could potentially drive people away from the church, but the group believes people need to be educated on all the different types of sins that they commit. All sin, fornication, adultery, uh, idolatry, which is worship of anything, making your own decisions, you know, God must be Lord of your life, you know, and, um, you know, drunkenness, and uh, there's so many sins in the Bible, you know, this, you know, immodest dress, the women wearing immodest clothes, there's all different things. Members of the group say their next stop is LSU and that they plan to come back to Ole Miss in the future. Peyton Green, Newswatch, Ole Miss. A former DM editor turned author returned to Ole Miss today. Jesse Holland visited with students and talked about his new book. Serena Henderson joins us with the latest. Thanks, Ariel. Holland's new book is titled The Invisibles and focuses on the lives of slaves in the White House. The author spoke about the book in the Overby Center today, and he even told me what it's like for him to be back at Ole Miss. One of the things I did when I was working at the DM was cover other authors coming to Ole Miss to speak about their books. So it's great to be, one, be that author that other students now can come and hear talk uh, about their times at Ole Miss and the works that they've done. I'm, I get I actually get chance to speak at Square Books. I remember coming to see so many authors at Square Books during my time at Ole Miss, and to now be one of those authors feels feels just incredible. The author even shared some words of advice. Colin at the very end gave this amazing quote about never stop learning, and as a journalist, never stop learning, like learning how, especially learning how to write. You know, I'm a broadcast major, but the fact that he was just telling anybody learn how to write and never stop learning and just be try to be as focused or just um or learn everything that you can about your specific field and then every field that you can about journalism it made it really important to me holland will be at square books tonight at six where you can purchase his book if you can't make it out tonight his book is available for purchase online at jesseholland.com ariel Thanks, Serena. If you walked by Bryant Hall today, chances are you saw the United Blood Services bus parked out front. One Ole Miss student tells us why he felt it was important to donate blood. Honestly, I mean, I'd rather give blood to somebody who's been hit by a car or insert, you know, problem someone needs blood, somebody was hit by a drunk driver or something like that. That's what I really am hoping to, why I'm hoping to get rid of my blood. Blood Service is based in Tupelo and supplies blood to all Mississippi hospitals north of Meridian. The buses collect blood components like red blood cells to help trauma and burn victims. Some lucky Ole Miss donors will be entered for a door prizes like a LaRue Salon and Spa gift card and gift cards to Ole Miss Bookstore and Obie's. United Blood Services plans to be back on campus a few weeks before graduation. 
Every year, the Student Activities Association gives students a chance to be the next Carrie Underwood or Philip Phillips. Auditions are coming up, and it could be your time to shine. Chandler Lewis has all the latest. Ole Miss Idol began auditioning contestants this evening. One of tonight's judges, Chandler Tucker, says what she's looking for in the next Idol. In our Ole Miss Idol, we are looking for someone who not only has a passion for this university, but also a passion for music and singing. In just a few moments, contestants will audition in this room to become the next Ole Miss Idol. Contestant David Thomas looks forward to the possibility of becoming the next Ole Miss Idol. I think I should be the next Ole Miss Idol. I've, well, let's say I, I've been singing for about three years, right? And I joined a acapella group in freshman year of high school. And so I got really interested from that and enjoyed it a lot. And so I actually auditioned for American Idol when they came this past summer. And I got through the first round there, but I didn't get further than that. So I'm using this to build off that and go for the more prestiged title of Ole Miss Idol. Contestant Kyra Addison tells us how she got her start singing. I feel like with my singing, I have touched so many people because I started in the church, and I feel like I should be because I've touched many lives, and I feel like I can still touch lives by my singing. Ole Miss Idol contestants will know if they advance to the next round by the morning. Chandler Lewis, News Watch, Ole Miss. The Great American, the Ole Miss Rifle Team prepares to host the Great American Rifle Ch Ch Conference Championships this week. The competition will take place at the Patricia C. Lamar National Guard Readiness Center here in Oxford. All nine of the teams competing this weekend are ranked in the top 20. Ole Miss rifle coach Valerie Booth says the team is ready to compete for the home crowd and close out the season with another great score. The football team is gearing up to travel to Haiti for their annual mission trip, but are joined by a few extra helping hands. Who's going with them? Find out when we come back. But first, Christine Williamson has the first look at the weather. Hey y'all, it's 45 degrees outside today, finally warming up from that dreary day we had yesterday. Partially cloudy with winds coming in at 7 miles an hour, but I'll have more for you during our broadcast at 5. Hi, I'm Christine Williamson here with your weather for Oxford tonight. Today we had 45 degrees and mostly cloudy. We had a lot of sun today, a really nice change from that dreary weather we had yesterday with just a little bit of wind. Over the next couple days, we'll see the weather start to warm up. As you can see, we've had some partially cloudy skies and we'll continue to see that over the next week. Well, we've had the mid 40s across the North Mississippi. In South Haven, we've had 45 degrees, Tupelo going all the way up to 48 degrees and Oxford staying pretty consistent around 46 degrees. Tomorrow we're going to see it start to warm up into the mid 50s. Tupelo going up to 54, Oxford staying at 52, Holly Springs at 53 and everyone else staying around 52, 53 degrees. And tonight if you're headed out to the square you may want to grab a jacket. It's going to be a chilly 28 degrees with some winds headed in from the northwest. Coming in a little bit quickly so definitely bundle up. Tomorrow we're going to see some sunny skies at 52 degrees, kicking off your weekend rather well. So be sure to grab a, only a light jacket if you're headed out to your classes or meetings Friday. And for your five-day weather report, on Friday it's going to still stay at 52 degrees, Saturday climbing up to 62, and we're going to see it warm up all the way to 67 on Monday, and we should be expecting a little bit of rain, so you may want to grab those rain boots for your Tuesday classes. So, Christine, I guess we should bring a jacket and not prepare for spring just yet, but... Maybe not yet, but grab those monogram rain boots while you can. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, well, the NFL Combine is officially underway as Big Ole Miss name participated today, but we got some baseball highlights to show you coming up on Rebel Watch. Your heart's racing. Heart's racing. You can feel every beat. If if you have any sort of negative thought, you're going to have a negative result. It all kind of centers in on that. Your shot. heart rate starts you getting You can't lower, let the little things get to you. On your confidence. And you so just one have to learn to block it out. For me, it's focusing times, on my breathing. You're it's important to kind of forget about everything that you just got. Calm your heart rate down. Slow everything down. Control your movement. And take the shot.
Hi, how are you? Browning Stubbs here, and welcome to Rebel Watch. The number one pick, that's what former Ole Miss offensive tackle Laramie Tunsil is gunning for come April 28th as he hopes the Tennessee Titans will take him with their top pick in this year's NFL Draft. Let's hear Tunsil's pitch on why he is the best candidate. I just think I have, I have the great feet. I have a great frame. I just think I'm the best. You got to have that swag about yourself. You got to be confident as that everywhere you go. You got to have that confidence. I mean, everybody want to be the number one pick. You know what I'm saying? So being the number one pick would be great. I'd love to play for any, any team. Man, I just know when I play for Ole Miss, it's just close. Close to Ole Miss. It's in Nashville. It'd be great to play again with your college team right there, right up the road. So I really don't know much about the Titans. I would love to learn a lot about the Titans, actually. Titans head coach Mike Malarkey said earlier this week that he wants to design more running plays for quarterback Marcus Mariota. So wouldn't it make sense to take the guy who is the only offensive tackle in this draft class to have 224 or more pass blocks and not allow a sack or hit in 2015? We'll find out come late April. Let's get to baseball. Tuesday's rain delay. Your Ole Miss Rebels return to the Diamond on Wednesday to finally take on Arkansas State. With Ole Miss outscoring Florida International 34-11 to over the weekend, Many thought that Ole Miss would steamroll the Red Wolves. This one had some unexpected drama. Would the Rebels remain perfect on this season? Let's get to the highlights. We start bottom eighth. Will Golson is going to score here off of the double by Tate Blackman. Ole Miss ties this one at 3-3 three three in the bottom of the eighth. But Ole Miss did not have a lead until the ninth inning, which is where we get here right now. Henry Latique lines one down the left field line. He's got extra bases. He is going to get a double on that play. Ole Miss in striking position in the bottom of the ninth. Now, up next, bases loaded. It's going to be a sack fly by Cameron Deshaun, and the ball is caught. Will Ole Miss score a run? Yes, indeed. Ray Alehu comes home to score for the Rebels. Ole Miss takes it 4-3. to three. Ole Miss remains perfect on this season. Also, Ole Miss softball was in action against Southern Miss. They lost the first game 2-1, to one, but then smoked the second game, winning 10-3. Two, one. Opening weekend of the baseball season broke attendance records, but it wasn't surprising because Ole Miss is becoming known as a baseball school. Anna Ellis has the story. Last weekend, Five, Ole Miss kicked four, off its baseball four, season three, by sweeping one, Florida International as fans packed Swayze Field with a record Ole attendance. And it's always one of the most popular sports. We have a great tradition here, and I think it's just the excitement along with the sunshine and getting towards that warmer weather makes everybody excited to come out to the ballpark. It was one of the most fun times I've had at a baseball game, that's for sure. I've been, like, I don't know, there's no other baseball games like it, I feel like. It's just one of a, one of a kind, really. This steady attendance is unheard of at most schools. Ole Miss ranks number two in the country for baseball attendance. Much of the success is because of the right field student section. Some students never miss a game. It's fun, like there's just a ton of students and everyone's either grilling out or having crawfish and um, you can drink beer there, you can bring in your own cooler, and it's just a lot of fun. The strong baseball culture at Ole Miss is evident, but future upgrades are in place to renovate the facilities and make the experience even better. I think it's, it's nice as the students have their own section out in right field, and really the, the biggest thing is to provide the student athletes with that best experience and have it all in one central location. Uh, Swayze Field will continue some renovations that we just announced last month. So that's a $13 million project. And really, it's just to keep the fan base together and try to provide the best student-athlete experience that we can here at Ole Miss. Expect this weekend series between Louisville and Ole Miss to be a hot ticket in town as the Cardinals are ranked number two nationally. Now let's pass it over to Hoops. One loss this season for the South Carolina Gamecocks. So if you want to know what a good basketball team looks like, Head to the pavilion tonight to watch Matt Enzo and the Rebels take on number two South Carolina in the home finale of this season. Oh yeah, and that one loss just so happened to come against the undefeated UConn Huskies. Now the Rebels fought hard against the Gamecocks back on January 28th, but fell in Columbia 81-62. to You may be asking why I didn't mention senior night since it's the last home game of the season, but as a refresher, there are no seniors for the Red and Blue. Tip-off is set for 8 p.m. on the SEC Network. Now, the man right here, Kobe Bryant, beloved by so many fans over the years since the Lakers have visited the Memphis Grizzlies. Last night was the last time that the Black Mama would play in the FedEx Forum. Let's get to the highlights. Now we see Vince Carter, Kobe Bryant, two legends 
showing respect before the game, but this game was actually all about Matt Barnes from Memphis. Makes the three there. This three, one of his 25 points on the night. That's a season high for Matt Barnes. He is loving it. But Kobe, he had to show Memphis a little too as he makes the fadeaway jump shot over Vince Carter. Lakers within three points at that moment. But Memphis, the stronger team, came to play down the stretch. Mike Conley knocks down the three. Grizzlies up by 17. And to put the dagger in the Lakers, Vince Carter knocks down the three. Memphis wins this one, 128-119. Again, Kobe Bryant with Vince Carter. Kobe Bryant showing love to Memphis. Grizz improved to be 33-23 and 23 on the season. Now that's it for sports. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for Rebel Watch at 3 p.m. where we'll have an exclusive interview with Athletics Director Ross Mueller. But first, we've got more news coming up. Stay tuned.